Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes. Everybody wants them. You want them. I want to see them. But they're not coming out anytime soon. Instead, we get this. What is up everyone, Munching Orange here and welcome back to another Pokemon discussion video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Diamond and Pearl beta leaks that came out about a week ago. I'm not exactly sure how these betas of Pokemon games end up leaking years after, you know, the game has actually been out. But it happened with Gold and Silver a while ago and we got a bunch of like beta sprites of what the Pokemon could have potentially looked like in those games. And now we have the same for Diamond and Pearl. And I gotta tell you, there's some pretty wacky ones in there. I might do a video in the future fully diving into my hopes for the Diamond and Pearl remakes that are probably going to end in disappointment, but for today, we've got the beta sprites for Diamond and Pearl, and if you guys are excited, make sure to hit that like button for some more munchy goodness. So this latest leak came a couple of days ago, I believe on July 26th, but while looking around on Google, I found this other article on Dr. Lava's cut content. And if you don't know, Dr. Lava actually does his own YouTube videos where he deep dives into cut content from Pokemon games. And as you can see here, we've got Pikachu and Raichu and what they could have potentially looked like if we had gender different sprites back in Gen 4. We got little droopy ears on Pikachu, still keeping that heart tail with a slightly different shape, but that definitely ended up making it into the final version, I guess. Same with Raichu, as you can see, the female one was originally gonna have a bit more droopy or floppy ears. And notably, the tail isn't cut off, which is what they ended up going with in the final version. It is interesting to think about that alternate timeline where Pokemon gender differences were way more pronounced in their sprites. When I say it out loud, it sounds kind of weird, but like that's already a thing in the games. Obviously, we've got Pokemon like Wobbuffet where the female has lipstick on for whatever reason. And as you can see in the beta sprites, the female Wobbuffet was originally meant to have a much longer head main thing as well. Looks kind of weird, so I'm kind of glad they didn't stick with that one. Uh, we also got Umbreon with its ears chopped off. I mean, that's just sad, dude. You know that's going to end up being sold in the Pokemon Black Market next to some Slowpoke tail. You got Umbreon ears. Most notably, we got Chimeco who was apparently going to have a completely different color tail in its male sprite. That's actually one I wouldn't mind seeing in the actual games, but it would get kind of confusing with shiny Pokemon also existing. Like, I would totally think this was a shiny Chimeco. In the end, of course, we didn't get these more stylized, gender different sprites. Some Pokemon still have, of course, slight gender differences, like the ones I talked about with Wobbuffet and Pikachu, but Definitely nothing this pronounced. And I think they ended up scrapping this concept because there were way too many Pokemon that they then would have had to make two sprites for each species. As we know, Game Freak and Hard Work don't get along, so. Fast forward to July 26, 2020, and Dr. Lava's got us here with a new Pokemon leak, presumably stemming from the same hack as all the other leaks from the last few years. I guess they just didn't data mine everything back when those gender different sprites came out, but now we've got the entirety of Diamond and Pearl, and right off the bat we've got the craziest design with the Gibble, Gabite, and Garchomp evolution line. Maybe actually they look more like land sharks than the finalized design. They've definitely got a bit more of a ground type looking color scheme there. I'm definitely not the first person to point this out, but in Garchomp's final design, it definitely looks like it would have evolved from Sharpedo and even down to the color scheme and the X on its forehead, like, makes you wonder if originally Garchomp was designed to be an evolution for Sharpedo, and then they thought we should make it its own Pokemon, and we got this design, but then they ended up not really liking it, cause, yeah, our boy ain't looking the best here. <laughs> Of course, Garchomp wasn't the only beta sprite to leak, and here we've got the original Togekiss, or not original, I'm not sure what the right term here is, but the beta design for it, which I know a lot of people have been hyped about, saying they wish that this is what Togekiss actually ended up being like, since it looks so menacing, like it could just crush your soul. There's actually a lot of people in the comments saying they prefer the beta version, even of Garchomp, dude, like... I don't know about that one. For Beta Togekiss, I can kind of understand. It's got a much sleeker and more menacing looking design that 
kind of fits more for a final evolution, but at the same time, I don't know, Togetic and Togepi are such happy Pokemon that I can only see them evolving into also a happy final evolution, and this beta one is just a bit too rugged looking in my opinion. So here we have pretty much all of the ones that have major differences from the final version. Well, actually, Miss Magius. Oh, wait. Oh, my God. <laughs> I only just noticed the back sprite, dude. I was like, hey, he doesn't look that different. But then you see that back sprite and yikes, dude. I actually like the Skuntank back sprite. He looks a lot more rugged and jagged, kind of like Togekiss. But it actually fits this Pokemon since he's a dark and poison type. What's that one dude from the Mickey Mouse, like his villain? Perugly's got the same vibe going with a bit more fluff or spikiness to the ends of its tails. Toxic Croak just looks like they didn't finish shading him. Like, actually, a lot of these, like Magmortar, just looks unfinished here in the front and back sprite. But then we get to Licky Licky, and I don't know what the heck was going on with this back sprite. Like, I think they had a completely different idea for what Licky Licky was originally gonna be. Because that back sprite makes it look like a Beyblade or Stegosaurus looking slime thing. Bruh, Yen Mega actually looks so cool. This is probably the first one so far where I'm like, yeah, that kind of looks better than what we ended up getting. I like Yen Mega's final design too, but this beta one kind of makes him look more tanky or bulky and menacing. And I don't know, I just like the color scheme that they chose too, as opposed to the finalized. Oh my god, is that supposed to be Luminion? <laughs> I think I just realized, like, I thought it was a completely new Pokemon, but I'm pretty sure that was supposed to be Luminion's beta design, which, yeah, I'm definitely glad they ended up fixing that one. What was going on with that tail? Is it supposed to have something attached to the back? Like, if I didn't know this was Luminion, I would guess it's like the first water and fairy type Pokemon. Like, forget Tapu Fini, dude. This is it right here. Speaking of fairies, we got the Pixies up next, or whatever they're called, and they don't really look all that different. Actually, the front sprites, I'm pretty sure, are the same, but as you can see in the back sprites, they were we're supposed to have ribbon claw things sticking out of the top. Azulf just looks like it's got a completely different Pokemon growing on its head, like a Kabuto with its own claws or... Same with Mesprit, it looks like a jellyfish with like claw ribbons coming out of it. I'm really glad they ended up giving that dude a makeover in the end. I knew I wasn't the only one that saw a Stegosaurus looking thing. <laughs> this is actually so cute though, look at its tongue and oh my god. Why does he remind me of that like hubba bubba bubble gum where it's like keeps on rolling out? Maybe that was the original inspiration for Licky Licky. I don't know, dude. There we can see Togekiss again with the back sprite. What the heck is... Is that Rotom? Bro, that has to be a placeholder image. There's no way this is originally what they wanted. Then again, it's a ghost, so maybe they had a much simpler idea in mind originally, but I'm glad they ended up sticking with making it, you know, more of an inanimate object that can go into other appliances and stuff, because that's such a cool idea for Rotom. This looks more like a rejected Undertale enemy than a Pokemon. Oh my god, Hippopotas, dude, it's literally just a hippo. <laughs> Again, this has to be like placeholder or like not finalized. Like they probably just had the idea that they're gonna make a hippo ground Pokemon and they just drew a brown hippo. Cause like, that ain't a Pokemon, dude. That's literally just a hippo. Hippowdon, you can tell they probably came up with first. They already have like the holes with the sand pouring out of it. Big open mouth. So that idea was definitely more finalized. Although I'm not a big fan of the color scheme. So, oh, I just realized that's one of the few Pokemon that ended up having a completely different sprite for male and female since they're completely different color schemes. And speaking of gender differences, Obama Snow here definitely looks a lot more feminine in this beta sprite than the finalized one where he's just aggressive Santa Claus tree. Not sure about the weird spiky hump back thing going on there. Carnivine is another one that you can tell is unfinished, like they didn't do the shading on it. That or it was designed by some Game Freak employees like third grader. No, Beta Shinx, oh my god, it's so precious. Oh my, we have to protect Beta Shinx at all costs, guys. It's too precious, look at it. To be honest though, I can see why they changed it because it doesn't really look like a Pokemon to me. I think it's mainly on the eyes. They're really cute, but they don't really scream Pokemon to me. 
Bronzong and Bronzor don't look all that different, although the bigger bell here does look a lot scarier with those big red eyes. Imagine getting woken up by the sound of a gong outside and then you look and see that looking at you. That's some nightmare fuel. What happened to Combi? Why was it like bell sprouts trapped inside of honeycombs? What? Really glad we didn't end up getting that. Vespikin's eye, like its face isn't quite all there in terms of details, but it's pretty much the same aside from looking less alien-like in its final version. And then we get to the starter Pokemon, which don't actually look all that different, at least for Chimchar. I mean, Monferno is a little bit rough around the edges, but you can tell all the like details and ideas were already there. Not sure we can say the same for Turtwig, or at least its evolutions here as Torterra is quite the chonky boy. It literally reminds me of the dinosaur from that animation. <laughs> Grotto looks like it's about to throttle its two little thrusters on its back and just blast off into space. And then Torterra, they kind of kept that circular tree design, but it just doesn't look very good. Its face especially though, I'm so glad they ended up revamping that because I'm not sure what's going on here, but it don't look pretty. Like the concept is still the same, but it really proves that execution is everything when it comes to the finalized version of some of these sprites. Finally, we got the Piplup line where the first and last evolution don't look actually any different, but Prinplup definitely went through some growing pains Definitely in its awkward teenage phase here. I guess it was a little ashamed of its weird hair So it decided to cover up wear a hoodie or like a space helmet or I don't know what's going on here It actually looks pretty cool though. I'm not sure I think I might like this print plop a little bit more than the actual final one Just because of that potential spin-off where Empoleon could have been like an astronaut penguin instead Jesus dude Cranidos and Rampardos looking like they're actually ready to go on a rampage which is what they're named after, so I kind of actually like this look for them. At least Rampardos, he actually looks a lot different than Cranidos, and I've always felt that Rampardos and Cranidos actually look a bit too similar. I actually like the fact that this Veda sprite has a bit of a different color scheme as well as growing more horns on its head there. Here's an artist rendition of what that beta Rampardos could have looked like. I actually like this a lot, dude. Like, I'm actually a little bit sad that we didn't end up getting this dude. I feel he could have even been like a rock and steel or rock and dragon type or something. Cranidos looks a little bit too angry and bloodthirsty to be a baby stage Pokemon, but Rampardos I like a lot. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> I keep thinking that's it, nothing else is gonna surprise me, and then <laughs> this pops up. We got Easter Island Mario out here, aka Beta Probo Pass. Like, this is another one that's just not finished, but it looks hilarious, dude. You can definitely tell the concept is there, but there's no denying, that's just funny. Oh, yes. Now let's get into the legendaries, starting with uh, the title or cover ones. We got Dialga and Palkia which don't really look all that different from their final versions, just a little bit more touching up here and there with the pixel work. Palkia looks a little bit pinker than usual, but I mean, the design is basically all there. Not quite the same for the rest of these legendaries though. <laughs> we got Uncle Reggie out here. He looks like literally just a guy who walked into the wrong party. He's like, oh, I thought this was the Earthbound villain convention. Might be, I, I'm, I'm gonna just head out now. Undertale, Earthbound, whatever. He just doesn't look quite like a Pokemon to me. But then again, it does look like Regigigas, which is a Pokemon. So I didn't even notice Beta Shaman right above it. I really just thought it was a little hat or something, but that's looking like he got the quarantine cut there. You know, just the full on buzz cut on Shaman. It's almost like that first day in school when you just got a fresh haircut and it doesn't quite look right. Like a Chia pet that hasn't grown the, the seeds yet. That's Beta Shaman. You thought that was weird? We ain't seen nothing yet, boys. Here's Beta Darkrai. And yes, I was able to guess that this is Darkrai, so you can definitely still tell what Pokemon it's supposed to be, but man, they did not have any of the details down yet. I think they knew they wanted to make some type of shadow Pokemon with like a red accent on it, but they didn't quite have the scarf neck thing down, so they just squiggled an S on it. I'm sorry, did I say I wasn't gonna roast these Pokemon? Cause 
This is supposed to be Giratina. <laughs> Dude's looking like a knockoff Landorus right now. Like, I think this might have been the inspiration for Landorus down the line. Because it's like a dog on all five legs? Wait, wait a minute. There's one in the front, obviously. We've got the other front leg there. And then two in the back, but then there's a third. We have five legs? I'm going to just assume this is a five-legged dog with one wing and nutsack hanging from its nose I apologize for that one but I mean what what, what is that lore thought that was Giratina before he got sent to the distortion and turned evil so primal Giratina should look more heavenly rather than like a fallen angel type beat <laughs> type B okay I mean I could kind of see that like a good and then a dark Giratina nothing like Giratina dude and finally what you've all been waiting for the most talked about beta design of all of the bunch it's beta Arceus I don't even know where to begin with this one. Just like Giratina, it looks nothing like what the end result ended up being and makes me think that maybe these were placeholders or not even meant to turn into, you know, Giratina or Arceus. Like maybe they didn't have an idea for Arceus yet, so they just drew this and were like, okay, well, we'll figure it out eventually, guys. Or alternatively, this could be a more metaphorical Pokemon, almost like a ghost or spirit. Spirit. I know a lot of you are gonna lose me right now, but there's this little game called Bloodborne that I'm a huge fan of and it deals with Lovecraftian themes. If you've never heard of HP Lovecraft, think of Cthulhu though, who's supposed to be this ancient god that sleeps underwater, but can still mind control people from the depths. And I imagine it basically not having a purely physical form. So it's more of an idea in people's heads, kind of like a god, which is what Arceus was originally supposed to be, you know, the god of Pokemon. What if instead of making a horse, <laughs> the original idea of Arceus was supposed to be more metaphysical or not having a physical form per se, like something with more of an ethereal form. That sounds like the right word, where it's not a physical body, but there is still a physical representation of it, which could be this like smoky figure with glowing red eyes. It definitely sounds weird and that's because it is. Lovecraftian horror is freaking weird, but I love it, man. Bloodborne is one of my favorite games. I'm sure most of you probably haven't even heard of it, but the idea of a Lovecraftian old god type of Arceus sounds really cool. And this beta sprite artwork kind of fits that description. So that's what I'm gonna imagine in my head was the canon. But instead we ended up getting a horse. So which one's better? Let me know in the comments down below as well as any of the other beta sprites we covered in this video. Were there any that you liked more than the final sprite that we ended up getting? I really love Licky Licky. Like I wish this was an actual Pokemon now. Same with Printplup being like a little astronaut penguin. I don't know. Those are probably my two favorites that we covered today. I think that's gonna do it for this video though. There's a lot more that came out during these leaks aside from just the Pokemon sprites, but they're not really as easy to talk about in a video since it's mostly like music or gameplay that would have been slightly different. So if you wanna check out the full list of everything, you can go to Pokelly on Twitter. He's posted pretty much all of the leaks over the last couple of weeks. And follow my Twitter because I post once a week sometimes. Thank you all so much for watching. Smash like if you enjoyed and stay tuned for another video next week, Wednesday.